Hi everyone, I am Hong Yu from Carnegie Mellon University, and I'm here to present our CHI 2024 paper, EIT POST, Variable and Practical Electrical Impedance Tomography for Continuous Hand Post Estimation. This work is done in collaboration with Alex, Jin Yi, and was advised by Ma Yang and Karam. Real-time digitalization of user's hand has lots of applications in mixed reality, rehabilitations for people with arm impairments after stroke and injuries, and many are the human-computer interaction tasks. The most successful and generalizable implementation of hand post tracking involves direct sensing methods, many involve camera-based solutions, such as VR headsets and web cameras. Those solutions, although very efficient, they suffer from several issues, such as limited field of view, occlusion effects, and enrollment to lighting changes. And most importantly, it will raise privacy concern by filming unintended users and environmental data, especially for the tasks that we mentioned that require the user to wear the device for an extended period. If we look into recent literatures on camera-based hand post tracking, they experience the same issues of privacy concern, large form factors, and potentially has higher power consumption. Those limitations has inspired our research question can we achieve high fidelity hand post tracking while ensuring privacy preservation with much lower power consumption and compact profile? And furthermore, can we extend the capability for cross-user scenario with longitude consistency? To this end, we propose EIT POST, a response device using electrical impedance tomography to model the impedance distribution of user's forearm and continuously estimates 3D hand posts. Here's a video demo of EIT post. EIT post is power efficient, robust to occlusion from the body, apparel, and lighting changes. It further support interactions with other objects and it has a smooth, slim profile, making it easily to be integrated into commercial electronic devices, such as smartwatch. Now, let's talk about what is EIT and how it works for hand post tracking. Electrical impedance tomography is an image technique that could um, detect the internal impedance distribution and get the 2D reconstruct image of that measured objects. So here is the top view of a tank filled with water. Imagine this is the object that we want to image. Electrical impedance tomography involving attaching several piles of electrodes onto the objects. And for each pile, there will be one electrode working as an emitter and one will be the receiver. From analyzing the signals, we will be able to calculate the resulting impedance caused by the passage of the current. And we can multiply the receivers as well as the emitters. And from the combination of the impedance value, we will be able to get the 2D reconstructed image of that objects. This video may be more intuitive for you to get the idea. So here I'm put a wooden stick into the water. You can see here, EIT could actually detect the movement of that object. And now I'm putting a metal, since they have different impedance value. It's showing us different color on the visualizer. And when I put these two things together, you can see EIT could actually differentiate these two objects. Previous researchers have demonstrated EIT's capability in hand gesture classification, rehabilitation, and body pose detection. However, achieving hand pose tracking will require higher quality of EIT signals. 
and thus pose two challenges for us. EIT is very sensitive to skin condition and electrode contact. How can we ensure consistent electrode con connectivity? Moreover, human body has variations in body composition, skin type. How could we ensure the EIT signal quality could be good enough for cross-session and cross-user generalizability? To address those challenges, our system, including a EIT sensing board that is upgraded from open source EIT kit that could customize optimized signals for each user, and an armband that ensures consistent skin to electrode contact across different users. To handle the signal variations, we have implemented several features on the sensing board. As we mentioned before, changing in body factor, skin conditions will cause the signal's fluctuation. So when a user put on the device, we will first perform the auto calibration feature to calibrate the best inject current for the user. When the user start to use the device, signal drifting may happen. To solve this, we also implemented a shift checker algorithm to take each bunch of the signals and check the shift of the sine wave to ensure the output signal is good enough. We also customize a high pass filter to filter the noise we observe during our measurements. All those three features together will ensure a customized best signal to noise ratio for individuals. For the armband design, our armband is made of only eight stainless steel electrodes, which are dimension of eight plus eight millimeters and a thickness of two millimeters. Make it durable and relatively compact. You can see here, it looks like a regular bracelet. The electrodes are interconnected with wires through coat welding technique and designed to interface with our sensing board. We then use an elastic strap to connect all the electrodes to allow flexibility and comfort for different arm size. So the mechanic design of the armband will ensure a good skin to electrodes connection for people with different arm dimensions. And when we apply the sensing principle into hand pulse detection, so attaching the electrodes on the user's forearm, we will be able to monitor the internal tissue change when a user is doing the hand pulse. And through fetting those data into machine learning pipeline, we will be able to predict the hand pulse leveling. Now let's talk about how we evaluate the system. We run the two user studies to evaluate the performance of EIT pulse across a total of 22 participants and 12 terminal hand poses. Our machine learning model using an extra tree regressor in different configurations to evaluate the system's performance. We use MBGBE, which is mean point joint position arrow, to um, evaluate the result. The lower the arrow means the higher the accuracy. We have conducted two studies to evaluate the system's performance under different real-world scenario. Um, so for the study one, we first invited a 19 participant for a within session user study. For each of them, we recorded two sessions of data with device calibration. We noticed that human body will experience changes in skin condition, muscle tone, and electrode placement. So we invited a 10 participant to come back one week later to record another session, which allow us to capture those ch changing body factor. Data collected across 19 participants were used for a cross-user evaluation. 18 of the participants were used for training and one was used for evaluation. This was done for each of the 19 participants and we were taking the average result. Here's the result. We do notice the accuracy drop among a more complex configurations from within session to cross session to cross user. And in the first evaluation within a session, 
we found an arrow of 11 millimeters showing that our system could accurately predict hand joint position, even for some subtle movements like pinch. And in the next evaluation or cross section, arrow slightly increased to 70 millimeters. And lastly, in a cross user evaluation, arrows are higher at 19 millimeters. We did lose some of the precision, especially around the fingertips, but we can still differential different hand posts accurately. We should still be able to meet the requirements for applications like remote device control. Now let's move to study two. This study is aiming to evaluate the longitudinal start, um, performance of EIT posts. Uh, for each of the user, they will first invite it to uh, record a one sessions of data. And after that data collection, they were asked to do have a 20 minutes activity gap without taking off the band. So during which they can do whatever they like, such as eating, typing, and working around. Altogether, we have four sessions of data collection and three activity gap. Over time, there was a slight increase in MBGPE, rising from 10 millimeters in trial two to 40 millimeters in trial four. This increasing in arrows indicates the shifting of electrodes do introduce noise, which we need to further investigate. But EIT posts could still maintain the stable level of hand post prediction for an extended period in this study, in this running for one hour and 14 minutes. We compared our result to previous study using optical approach like disco band and finger track. Our system showing similar or even lower arrows compared to those direct sensing methods, which means our system could achieve the same levels of accuracy. And if we look at the power consumption, EIT post has tenfold or lower than those systems with the desirable sampling rate. In conclusion, we present EIT post, an indirect sensing approach for hand post estimation that achieves similar levels of accuracy to other direct sensing methods, but with much lower power consumption and robustness under various conditions. Thanks for listening. For more information, please look into our paper.